Hello there. Welcome to my channel, I Read Aloud. I am Nada. I want to thank you for being here with me on this journey on YouTube. I want to remind you, I want TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter for excerpts. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the like button if you like the video. Um, it all helps more than you know to grow the channel, so I appreciate in advance. Thank you. I am reading today a letter by Jane Austen to a friend of hers, Cassandra. This is the second letter in the collection and uh, it is uh, dated January 14, 1796. I have just received yours and Mary's letter and I thank you both, though their contents might have been more agreeable. I do not at all expect to see you on Tuesday since matters have fallen out so unpleasantly. And if you are not able to return till after that day, it will hardly be possible for us to send for you before Saturday. Though for my own part, I care so little about the ball that it would be no sacrifice to me to give it up for the sake of seeing you two days earlier. We are extremely sorry for poor Eliza's illness. I trust, however, that she has continued to recover since you wrote, and that you will none of you be the worse for your attendance on her. What a good-for-nothing fellow Charles is to bespeak the stockings. I hope he will be too hot all the rest of his life for it. I sent you a letter yesterday to Ipthorpe, which I suppose you will not receive at Kintbury. It was not very long or very witty, and therefore, if you never receive it, it does not much signify. I wrote principally to tell you that the Coopers were arrived and in good health. The little boy is very like Dr. Cooper, and the little girl is to resemble Jane, they say. Our party to Ash tomorrow night will consist of Edward Cooper, James, for a ball is nothing without him, Bueller, who is now staying with us, and I. I look forward with great impatience to it, as I rather expect to receive an offer from my friend in the course of the evening. I shall refuse him, however, unless he promises to give away his white coat. I am very much flattered by your commendation of my last letter, for I write only for fame and without any view to pecuniary emolument. Edward is gone to spend the day with his friend, John Lifford, and does not return till tomorrow. Anna's now here. She came up in her chaise to spend the day with her young cousins, but she does not much take to them or to anything about them except Caroline's spinning wheel. I am very glad to find from Mary that Mr. and Mrs. Fowle are pleased with you. I hope you will continue to give satisfaction. How impertinent you are! to write to me about Tom, as if I had not opportunities of hearing from him myself. The last letter that I received from him was dated Friday 8th, and he told me that if the wind should be favorable on Sunday, which it proved to be, they were to sail from Falmouth on that day. By this time, therefore, they are at Barbados, I suppose. The rivers are still at many down and are to be at Ash tomorrow. I intended to call on the Miss Biggs yesterday, had the weather been tolerable. Caroline, Anna and I have just been devouring some cold souths and it would be difficult to say which enjoy it most. Tell Mary that I make over Mr. Hartley and all his estate to her for her sole use and benefit in future and not only him, but all my other admirers into the bargain wherever she can find them, even the kiss which C. Powlett wanted to give me, as I mean to confine myself in future to Mr. Tom Lefroy, for whom I don't care sixpence. Assure her also, as a last and indubitable proof of Warren's indifference to me, that he actually drew that gentleman's picture for me and delivered it to me without a sigh. Friday. At length, the day is come on which I am to flirt my last with Tom Lefroy, and when you receive this, it will be over. My tears flow as I write at the melancholy idea. William Shute called here yesterday. I wonder what he means by being so civil. There is a report 
that Tom is going to be married to a Lickfield lass. John Lifford and his sister bring Edward home today, dine with us, and we shall all go together to Ash. I understand that we are to draw for partners. I shall be extremely impatient to hear from you again, that I may know how Eliza is, and when you are to return. With best love, etc., I am affectionately yours, Jane Austen.